we acknowledge that our creator God has been present in this wide brown land since the beginning of creation and that God has been made known continually in law and custom to the first peoples of this region. We acknowledge elders past and present and look forward to the future to which God calls us as people who participate in the reconciliation of the whole creation. Now, folks, <clears throat> I've been quite ill this week and I think I'm about 67%, but I'm on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite a good feeling, let me tell you, when you're taking um, prednisone and uh, all sorts of other interesting things. Um, so I won't be singing much this morning. Uh, thank goodness for the band who've been practicing hard all during the week. Did I put that song in? Oh, well, can you take it out, please, Alex? I don't know how I put that in. That's the one I was looking for. Let's start with a greeting. The Lord be with you. If you have a printed order of service, you will find the responses are in bold print. If you're looking on the screen and if my brain has enabled me to do it properly, the responses will hopefully be in white print. Let us call upon the one who knows every thread in the fabric of our lives. God of every seam and stitch, gather and mend us. Let us call upon the one who embroiders new designs, who weaves new textiles with patience and delight. God of every seam and stitch, Gather and mend us. Let us call upon the one who patches worn places with compassion. God of every seam and stitch, gather and mend us. I love these words. We are the tapestry of God. Every strand important to the pattern. Each frayed end worth mending. Every thread a treasure. May we hope in these words. May our harmony be our mending. Let us worship God together. If you're able to stand, the band's going to lead us as we sing. May the peoples praise you and feel very uh, content on this St. Patrick's Day to dance and sing and clap and whatever else the Spirit moves you to do. Called us out of darkness into your glorious light.
space, whether you're watching online or on DVD. Uh, many of you will have worn green or some other bright colours for St Patrick's Day today. Um, and there'll be a chance later when we come forward for communion to lay the symbol of your family on this table. We'll take it down and put it in the middle down there. Um, and we'll gather all those symbols and then pray a blessing on them a little later. Uh, also, there's lunch. Hopefully many of you have bought some bits and pieces uh, to share lunch today. Um, and it's also a trading table um, for us today as well. Uh, there are notices in the foyer for those um, whom you would like to approach to be on church council, to, be, to stand for election as elders or church councillors for our meeting in May. Uh, and yesterday was a meeting of presbytery and Marg's going to come um, and uh, share just a couple of highlights from that and there's a printed uh, record of the report out in the foyer for you. Tomorrow afternoon at 3.30, um, the, uh, the regional youth care meeting will be on here at 3.30 and at 4pm uh, we're going to, as part of that, we're going to have a special blessing for Mr. Ben Gladden, who's um, going to be, is being uh, given the job of being the new regional uh, youth care coordinator. Um, so I hope many of you will be able to come and share afternoon tea between 3.30 and 4 and then for about 40 to 50 minutes there'll be a short meeting but it will include a blessing uh, for Ben tomorrow afternoon. Marg, if you'd like to use the, the microphone. Good morning. Richard and I travelled to Naranda Uniting Church yesterday for Presbytery and there's a report out on the table, some copies, and if we run out of copies, I've got the original here that I can print some more for you. It was lots of business yesterday, but the highlights I want to bring to you today, uh, one is that there are going to be four days in which you can participate of learning during the year. And this one, the first one is on this week, on Wednesday, and you can do it online. So you don't have to go to Perth to do it. And it's about ritual, reviving ritual in worship, pastoral care and community. So it's looking at how we can use ritual to actually uh, enhance our faith. That's the first thing. And that's being run by the, um, by Seedle, uh, sorry, the... Uh, it's now still the Perth Theological Hall because we didn't manage to change the name yesterday. <laughs> There's long arguments about um, what it should be. The other thing I want to bring to you as a rejoicing thing is that we uh, approved the ordination of Sue Lord as a Minister of the Word. So once she has had her certificate uh, issued by the Assembly, and she is called to a congregation, she will be inducted as a Minister of the Word. And some of you will remember Carolyn Abdul taylor who has been down here a number of times, but uh, she is from Kalamunda Uniting Church, and she was approved as a lay preacher yesterday. So that's, that would, they were two things of uh, great rejoicing. One thing of rejoicing, but in a sad, sad way too, is that we closed some congregations yesterday and they are being transferred to faith communities and I'll just say that it's much easier for a group to be a faith community they don't have all of the responsibilities of being a congregation which are considerable under the Uniting Church so they were uh, Kellebaran, uh, Narragin, Southern Cross 2J and Training and the three places together of Karnama, Corral and Three Springs so they are now faith communities in the Our Uniting Church. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. So unless you are, have not had the news on or haven't looked at your calendar or the TV today, um, 
you would know that it's St. Patrick's Day. And around the world, much of the Western communities are remembering St. Patrick who came to Ireland long, long ago to bring people to God. Now, St. Patrick was not Irish. Shock horror. He was actually born in Britain in the late 4th century and he was kidnapped by the Irish or the Romans or whoever it was then and taken to Ireland as a slave where he worked and was worked brutally for about six years until he, ima- until he managed to escape and return to his family. Now imagine that horror in your life and then being called to become a priest of the gospel because that's what happened to Patrick. Eventually, God, through the voice of the church, gets Patrick to come back to the place where they'd imprisoned him and made him a slave and he goes there to become a missionary to the Irish people. Now, he faced many challenges during his ministry. There's a whole lot of very popular folklore about St. Patrick, much of which is very good creativity and license uh, taken with family stories that have been passed down. But um, how he persevered and continued working with the Irish people to bring them to faith in Jesus Christ is something important. He's also known for using this plant, the shamrock, a three-leaf tool to teach the concept of the Trinity, three persons in one God, God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Holy Spirit. Today, we're also welcoming a whole lot of people who've been part of our congregation. Some have been part for a long, long, long time and have never been here to be welcomed. Others have joined in more recent times but no matter how long or how short you are here, you are all welcome. In this Lenten period, uh, it's also this time where the welcoming ministry team and church council decided it was, it was an opportune moment on St. Patrick's Day to acknowledge that so many of us have parts of our heritage that come from different parts of this tiny blue planet that's swirling through the cosmos. And as I said a little earlier, Um, you'll get a chance to bring and place an item from your family's heritage if you brought that with you to dedicate once more your family to the service of God. So now, as St. Patrick did so long ago, despite all that opposition, he lit the flame of Christ and Christ's presence within the Irish people and that has for always transformed that nation, not always for the good because we got into the us and them and who's got the most important truth and who had the best power or the heritage in closeness to God. But having worked with some Irish ministers of Roman Catholic and Methodist training over the years, their common goal is to bring people to love the way of Jesus more than anything and put the other rubbish tribal stuff aside. Let us pray together. Loving Creator God, on this St. Patrick's Day, we thank you for calling St. Patrick to bring the gospel of Christ to the people who had once enslaved him. Thank you for the message that was so imprinted deeply in his lives that he called them to follow the ways of Jesus. On this day, we thank you too, majestic God, for all those who have known and brought the gospel of Jesus to life in this land. For those first peoples who walked hand in hand with you for tens of thousands of years. For all those who came later wanting to share the good news and live by it. And we thank you particularly today for all those whom you've called to be part of our life together. In each life, O God, we see your gracious, welcoming love, enabling us to live joyfully. 
witnessing to the life-changing power of being a follower of the way of Jesus, may we never cease to proclaim Jesus through our way of living. Holy God, as we gather within the embrace of your grace, we take a moment to admit that often we fail to live as Jesus calls us to. We thank you for your faithfulness and justice which enables us to stop, to recalibrate, and in your strength to start living the ways of Jesus again, not being held back by previous failures, but by learning and growing along the way. We thank you for the words of this next prayer song. As it washes over us, may your spirit renew and refresh us again this day as we hear and sing it together. Having rested in those words, I invite you to pray aloud these words with me, which Alex is going to put up on the screen now. We pray together. We confess our failure to live the way of Jesus to you, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Compassionate God of life, your kindly pardon we seek. 
for our careless talk, our broken promises, our empty speech, for all that we have left undone, for all that we have done without thought. As we listen and are blessed by the assurance and knowledge of your forgiveness, enshield us, encircle us, each day and each night. Uphold us, be our treasure, our stronghold, everlasting Son of God, most high. Hear us now as we pray in our individual silence. Dear friends, the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. And I declare to you in the name of Jesus our Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives you all our sins strengthen you in goodness and by the power of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit to keep you in eternal life now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And then they jumped to their feet. And they sang together, <laughs> my soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. There are instructions on the top of these things for which voices are going to sing. So there's bits for all voices, bits for ladies' voices, bits for men's voices. Um, but let us celebrate together. And then at the end, I ask you to remain standing as we share the greeting of peace. Thank you. <laughs>
share the peace. <laughs> the peace of Christ be with you all. With uh, whatever you think is safe peace sharing, you can share the peace with those around you. Jane, is it you? And who else is doing the scripture readings today? Jane and Vic, come on down, please. So we're hearing today the readings that are set for the Feast of St. Patrick from the little book called First Thessalonians. Try saying that when you've got a sore throat. <laughs> you've had too much cough mixture. Thessalonians. A little place called Thessalonica or Thessaloniki is sometimes, and this is the, the first letter to, Thess to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, and then we're going to read from Psalm 96, which is in about the second book of the, the uh, Hebrew Psalms, so it's like the books, Songs 1 to 50, that was all they could print in that scroll, and then 50 to 100, then 100 to 150, or something like that. And then we're going to hear the last bit of Matthew's Gospel, which I think is one that's always, um, that have, that has always picked people's hearts up and called them to go and share the good news. Come on down, please, folks. So this reading is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2. And you've never read before such long sentences. <laughs> and Paul is speaking. We had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God, who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. You remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden you in any way, while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you, and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And the second reading is from Psalm 96, and we'll read it alternately. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Declare God's glory among the nations and wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and great is to be praised. God is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are mere idols. 
It is the Lord who made the heavens. Render to the Lord, you families of the nations, render to the Lord glory and might. And for the gospel reading, we may read from Matthew chapter eight, 28, beginning at the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. For these ancient words we give thanks to God. Thanks, Vic and Jane. I love those last words of Matthew's gospel because it says they all went and they worshipped the risen Christ but some doubted. And that's just normal. Some doubted. But Jesus gave them all the same commission. Didn't matter whether they believed or not. See, belief is not the core of our calling. It's our obedient response to God's call. So, happy St. Patrick's Day. The three traditions from which, which brought the Uniting Church into being were, who can remember, the Congregational Church, the Methodist Church and the Presbyterian. So, Congregational, Methodist, Presbyterian. Kind of a little bit like the three leaves of the shamrock. And each of our preceding denominations held very strongly to the traditions on which they were founded. Faith, service, inspiration, reason, study, the scriptures, the sacraments, the creeds, church history, and then all these other things which flowed out of Jesus' ministry equality between the genders, mutuality and justice for all were part of the foundational documents of our denomination. And the Uniting Church holds great respect for the mothers and fathers of the faith in the millennia past. And however, while our building is called St Augustine Worship and Community Centre, our expression of faith does not create or venerate same saints in the same way that our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters do. I did my Masters in Theology through the Australian Catholic University. I, part of my Masters is degree is to know all about the seven Roman Catholic sacraments. I got a distinction. <laughs> and as I used to read through some of the papal encyclicals, I was thinking... Oh, dear God, we're making the same mistakes again. None of us wants to end up in the records of church history as generation after generation makes the same mistakes. Nor do we want to have Bunbury Uniting Church kept making the same errors as the followers of Christ who'd gone and died before them. Well, I think we're just doing that anyway. At the same time, we recognise that God has been made known to all people down through the millennia. And some of that wisdom can be useful for us in our time and place. St Patrick is one of the most famous and revered saints in Christian history. And there are many lessons 
that we can learn from him and his ministry. According to legend, St. Patrick used the the shamrock. And he pointed to the concept of the Holy Trinity, something that you could find in everyday nature. And I wonder what there is in our nature here that might be able, we might be able to point to people in Western Australia and say, here is a symbol about the mystery of the nature of God. Perhaps it's in some of our wildflowers. Perhaps it's in some of our native insects and birds. Perhaps it's in the way the water moves from one area to another. But St. Patrick used the leaves of the shamrock and he said, like the leaves, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are distinct entities. They are also one. And it helped the Irish people understand that really deep mystery and it became the cornerstone of Christian theology within Ireland. And everywhere you look, you will see the shamrock on people who claim to come from Ireland and who have Irish ancestry. And I don't think they know that they're wearing a symbol of God, the Trinity. I just like to go up to them and say, oh, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. (coughs) Try that with some of your friends when they're wearing the shamrock. Isn't it wonderful? We believe in the same God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Saints' lives can teach us lots of lessons. And I've picked out just four from Patrick's which might help us in our lives, which might help our church and our city. The first one is perseverance. And I looked up my thesaurus. I love thesauruses. What's a similar word for this? In other words, it's persistence, tenacity, determination, resolve, staying power, purposefulness, patience. I don't like the last one. (laughs) Patrick faced many challenges during his ministry in Ireland, but he had perseverance, he had persistence, tenacity, He never gave up. He continued to preach the gospel and to do his best to have people choose to follow the way of Jesus. We need that kind of perseverance still in our time and place today. Today we should all be inspired by St. Patrick to continue to share that good news, especially if we find ourselves on an unfamiliar place or on a difficult journey. Now, I do not believe that the world has suddenly fallen into a, a state of having a lot less spiritual people. But remember those words from Matthew's Gospel? They worshipped him, but some doubted. I believe that in Australia and right around the world, there are many more people who love Jesus, who admire Jesus, but many of them don't like what the church has or has not done. And it's important to realise that Jesus' women and men followers fell into that kind of group. They didn't like what the temple leaders were doing or not doing. And last year, as we travelled through the basis of union, I reminded us that we always need to read our Bible in the light of the news of the day, to use our intellect and our skills and every bit of wisdom that God the Holy Spirit has given us to find a way forward, lest we end up in those annals of history making the same mistake again and again and again. What's that saying? Stupidity is the thing that says if we keep doing the same thing again and again, that it will change, not wisdom. And God gives us the spirit of wisdom. The next thing that marked out St. Patrick was humility. I once had somebody come and tell me that they weren't very good at English, but they came and said that they wanted to feel more humile. (laughs) 
took me a little while to work out what they meant. Greg, we just want to feel more humile. Modesty, humbleness, meekness, a lack of pride, a lack of vanity. Despite his many accomplishments, despite being elected the Bishop of Ireland, St. Patrick remained humble. And he's now considered to be the patron saint of Ireland. Nevertheless, he gave God all the glory for that which was happening through his ministry. He recognised that his success was due to God's grace, not his own abilities. Remember the beginning of his life? He'd been stolen into slavery by the very people to whom he was called to minister. Can you imagine that? I can't. Having such a turnaround in your life that you can go back and minister the good news of Jesus to those people who had imprisoned you and enslaved you for six years. That requires an enormous amount of forgiveness and grace and Christian renewing. It is what Jesus talked about when he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again from above. The story of St. Patrick's life is a good reminder to all of us that we are called to remain humble, to be with the least of these. And who are the least of these in our community that we are called to serve and listen to and witness? Who are those who are missing from our church family? Slide number seven, the next one. Prayer. You can have quietness prayer, you can have prayer walking, prayer listening, prayer music, prayer writing, prayer serving, prayer talking, prayer, prayer, prayer. Patrick was known for his devotion to prayer. Some stories claim that he prayed hundreds of times a day. I don't know how he did that and did everything that he did. Although he didn't have a mobile phone, a computer, a TV or anything else to interrupt him. But he was constantly praying as he read the scriptures and walked with God through nature. Where should I go next? And obviously he took his prayer model from Jesus who was always found away from the maddening crowd praying. Now I know it's hard to make time in our busy schedules. I find it really hard. But one of those great pieces of wisdom that the Bible teaches us is that we should be praying without ceasing. What that means is that prayer just becomes as natural as our breathing. Whatever we are doing, we are in this conversation with scriptures and with God with church history, with our brains, and we're saying, how is the life of Jesus being lived out through my words and actions now? We are praying without ceasing. It just becomes part of who we are. Not that we're stopping and going, my father's better than your father, amen. No, it becomes that bit which is just innate in us. It just goes on and on. It is the constant cycle. Some people come early on Sunday mornings to pray in either our um, meeting room or prayer room. Some pray in their coffee groups, study groups, others as they garden or walk or travel. One of the major things that our congregation needs to be praying for in the next couple of months is for more leaders to share the wisdom and load with the church council. We are desperate again, folks, after COVID. We can have up to 12 people on our church council. At the moment, we've only got six. That's a large load for 250 household units to care for. If God is calling you, please, answer even if you doubt even if you doubt the last thing love despite the fact that Patrick was forced into slavery he followed the call of the Holy Spirit to return to Ireland and to share the good news of Christ in the same land where he had been in bondage why through the love of God. The scriptures also teach us that 
the love of our parents is important. Remember the Old Testament uh, commandments? Honour your parents. Doesn't mean you have to do what they say or agree with them. It means that you don't let them live in poverty on the street to honour your parents. But to love them as God loves them. And for some of us, that's really difficult. The love of family, partner, children, relatives, the love of community, the love of wisdom and scripture, the love of serving. Love, love, love conquers all. One of our great connections as Uniting Church, as Methodists, as Presbyterians, as Congregationals, is that we are united with the diverse congregation and local congregations throughout the world. We are in community with all these people across the world. And it's a joy to be part of a denomination that praises God in so many unique and different ways and places. I think on any Sunday morning, there are about 11 different language groups in the Uniting Church in Western Australia alone, worshipping God. 11 different language groups, from tiny little ones to big ones, to ones like ours where we have so many people coming from different languages that we've had to resort to my mother tongue, the only tongue I know well, English. But we are all welcome today. I want to lead you in prayer. Holy triune God, on this feast of St. Patrick, we thank you for your grace and love. We pray that we would be inspired by the story of St. Patrick to willingly and humbly follow wherever you lead us. May we boldly share with others how experiencing your love has changed our lives. May we be willing to carry the gospel anywhere and everywhere. Today we also give you thanks for those who work diligently to teach and serve all people through the wonders of your love. Thank you for parents and grandparents and guardians our messy church team and all who work so hard to care and share the stories of our faith. Finally, O oh God, we lift up to you our beloved Uniting Church. We pray for our moderator Ian and General Secretary Andrew, for the chair of our Presbytery Allison and Secretary Bev. Inspire each of us with comfort, mercy and compassion, discernment and strength. We pray particularly for those who are in any kind of need today. We think of our friend Rob who's been in hospital, for those who are recovering, for those who are sorrowing in any kind of loss. We think of all those who are lonely today, those who go without food, who have no permanent place to lay their head, and those who are in prison. We pray too for the places where there is peace needed in the world. Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Gaza, various parts of the continent of Africa. We pray too for those whom we will welcome as new members today. May we be a blessing to them as they are to us. Be with all the clergy in our local churches and all the lay leaders. Help us to together reflect the love of Christ and to walk with humility and always place the love of Christ above everything else. Triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, you alone grant us peace. Be with us now as you always have been. Amen. Our musicians are going to lead me in this next, lead us in this next beautiful song. It's a form of St. Patrick's Breastplate, which is the, the famous prayer of St. Patrick. Christ be with me, Christ within me. Remain seated, um, and then we're going to move straight to the uh, induction of 
few, welcome a few members and I'll need a handheld microphone, please, Jared. song and I hope we're going to sing that quite a bit more in the next little while because it's just one of those beautiful beautiful songs now uh, we're going to welcome a whole bunch of people as members and as I call your name come on down <laughs> what am I doing Jerry don't use that one okay uh, Jane, would you like to come and hold this one for them, please? Can I introduce to you folks, Elizabeth Anderson. Come on down. Hayden Cannon, come on down. Peg and John Cotter, come on down. Pat Green, come on down. Matthew, I haven't asked how to say your last name. Kreisig. Matthew Kreisig, come on down. <laughs> Diane McCallum, come on down. <laughs> Kathy Radomiak, come on down. <laughs> Sue Sawyer, come on down. If you all stand over there, folks. Don't they look rather impressive? Yeah. Give them another big round of applause together. Yeah. Now, did you all bring your bits of paper with you? No. You didn't. Okay. Okay, can you, can you have a look? I'll, I'll come and stand with you guys over here. Um, 
Just, you can stand somewhere in the middle there, Jane, and they're all going, oh, no, here, Vic's got one there. Need another order of service. Have I got another one? Oh, Margaret's got them. Oh, good. Marg's got them. Excellent. So you'll need to be on page something. Seven. Eleven. Seven. Eleven. So every now and again, folks, like two or three times a year, we have a service where we welcome people officially. And the church council, after it's received applications from these people, has agreed that they're going to be received as members in association or baptised members or confirmed members or adherents. They're the four kinds of membership that we have in our uniting church. So... Dear friends, dun, 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 Take a look at this, your church. Uh, <laughs> it is. Okay, and then there's, there's a response there that says, yes, that is my wish, but take a long, deep look as you make this response. <laughs> is it your wish to make this community of faith here at St. Augustine, your church family, and the people with whom you will share your journey of faith. Is this the place and are these the people with whom you will seek to make sense of the issues in your life? Your dreams, your faith, who you are, what you are to do and who God calls you to be. Is it your wish to make this the place where you continue your journey into greater health and wholeness, where you listen to the story of God's salvation and the good news of Jesus Christ, allowing Jesus to be an example and teacher to you where you are called to a life of ministry and justice and where you are fed at the table of new life. And if it's your response, you can make this response. Yes, that is my wish. Whew. Another question. Will you commit yourselves to seek and serve Christ in union with this community of faith? I will with God's help. Will you pledge your spiritual, social and financial support to this church family? I will with God's help. Now those of us who are here don't get away without making a promise to these people here either. Have a look at the words that are on the screen and if you want to say we will, you are welcome. Will you, who are members of this faith community, who are witnessing these promises, share the joys and sorrows and do all in your power to support these people in their life in Christ? Amen. Will you welcome Elizabeth, Hayden, Peg and John, Pat, Matthew, Diane, Kathy and Sue into this family of the Uniting Church? Will you embrace their needs, their gifts and their dreams? Will you recognise that their presence and participation will change the shape of our congregation and help it to grow in new ways? Will you support them in their journeys and assist them in their ministries? And we need a good response from this, folks. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, there you go. I hope you feel affirmed, folks. <laughs> Let us pray these words together. Loving God, send your Holy Spirit to be among us, knitting us to one another. Help us to grow with each other, to love each other, to support each other, that by our common life in this community, we may come to know and serve you and all our sisters and brothers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Jane and I are going to give you a, a handshake. Welcome. <laughs> welcome officially. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now you can be on the rosters. <laughs> welcome, welcome, yes. <laughs> Now, was that terribly hard or onerous, folks? No. Excellent. Not, not too bad. A big round of applause and you can return to your seats.
Now, in honour of those of you who've been welcomed today, Gary has written this brand new song for you. Welcome, dear friends, to a church family. space we welcome your face we ring out the church bells for you welcome dear friends to our church family gladly welcome by all gathered here in this happy place we welcome your face we know laughter good friendship Those who've been rostered on to assist in the distribution of communion, could you come forward, please? You'll be used to this stuff, Dr. Benny. Friends, this is the table at which Jesus is the host and the servant. That's a big juxtaposition, the host and the servant. This table doesn't belong to any one person or denomination, therefore everyone, no matter what, is welcome to come and receive the gluten-free bread and the grape juice. Would you share with me in these responses? Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have these, we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of hands, of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation. Through your goodness we have all the gifts that we have this morning set before you, shaped by human hands. Use them in the hallowing of our lives. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of wisdom and truth, we give heartfelt thanks for the joy of creation and abundant praise, for the grace of your liberating love. You gathered the 12 tribes of Israel and spoke your words to Elijah and to your prophets. In the fullness of time, your son gathered 12 disciples and walked the way of the cross that John the baptizer had prayed for him. After his great passion and suffering, he rose to glory on the third day. And so, with the hosts of heaven, we gather round your throne, singing your eternal hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth shall praise your name on earth and sky and sea. teaches us this deep mystery of the Last Supper. When Jesus was sharing the Passover with his friends in a borrowed room, it was a strange night. 
First of all, he took off his outer robes and washed the feet of his friends like one of their servants normally would have. Then they shared the central ceremony of their faith. Prayers, singing, conversation, food, questions and answers. And then in a moment of silence, Jesus took some of the leftover flatbread from the table. He held it up in the manner of a host, offered a special blessing and broke it before them. I don't know if it was a surprise to hear him announce again that his body would be broken like the bread he was breaking and sharing with them. And then there was a pause. Perhaps it was uncomfortable or a moment they should take note of. And it seems that moment passed. And then later in the night again, St Paul writes that Jesus took another symbolic cup left on the table, another leftover item. And he held it up again in the manner of the host and offered a a similar but different prayer, saying that this cup of wine, like his life, would be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Perhaps, like so many other parts of the deep truth of Jesus, the parabolic, the riddle, that deep multi-layered meaning of those two actions did not become clear until after his death and resurrection. Suffering God, your son knew betrayal and denial and painful death. In his broken body we see the extent of his love for you and your love for him. We also see the power of your love demonstrating that nothing, death, sin, suffering, absolutely nothing can separate any of us from your everlasting love. So we pray, send your spirit once again on those gathered around bread and wine, whether in this place or online or in their own spaces. We pray that the sharing of this simple meal may be for us an experience of the outpouring of your love and a healing of any sense that we are not accepted by you. Send that same spirit upon this bread and wine that they may be for us the life of Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. This is the great mystery of the faith. Let us say together, Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ is with us now. We break this bread to remind us of the gift of Christ, that though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So today, as you come down the front to Marg and me, or Vivino and Richard, if you've got a symbol of your family heritage that you want to come and place on this table as you come past, do that. And then come and receive the elements and make your way back. And then after that, we'll ask a blessing on all these symbols. We're not going to keep them or auction them or sell them off (laughs) on the trading table. Okay? you will get them returned, okay? But as they come, it's a symbolic. This service comes out of the roots of the Kirking of the Tartan, which was started by the late Peter Marshall, where people across America wanted to celebrate that their clans and their families that they'd come from had been the ones in whom had inculcated their faith. And even though they'd travelled Miles and miles across this globe, they still held on to that deep heritage and they wanted to come and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And if that's your desire today, I invite you to do that as well. It's no surprise to you that I've got Ross Tartan.
As you're ready, folks. If you need us to come and meet you in your seat, please wave. Peace be with you on this day. Peace be with you in every way. Love and joy and peace be with you. Savior is done. It's here to stay. Be not troubled. May we who have shared Christ's body live his risen life. We who have drunk from his cup bring life to the, to the others. We whom the Spirit's light give light to the world. Keep us, O God, 
firm in the hope you've set before us so that we and all your children will be free and the whole earth praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to have a prayer and the, the, uh, the response, I think, is bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. So there's lots of little bits of different symbols and things up here um, and I have no doubt that there's more things that uh, people could have bought, but we pray. Lord, bless the tartans and all the symbols of our families and heritage that we presented today. Bless the mobs and clans and people and families which they signify. May we strive to live up to the very highest ideals they represent. We pray, bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. We thank you, O God, for your living word, Jesus the Christ, who ordained a rich heritage of faith and sacrifice from our ancestors, from Adam to Noah, Naomi to Esther, from Elizabeth and Zechariah and onward to the incarnation of Jesus through Mary and Joseph, to the establishment of your church, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Never let us forget what a heritage of faith is a joy to be shared. So we pray, bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. Thank you, O God, for the blessings of family, the warmth, comfort and security of family love. Never let us forget that our family love is a gift to be shared with kin and stranger. So we pray. Bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. We pray, O God, for those who've lived and died in Christ, that we might have the freedom to dwell in a community of faith. Never let us forget the sacrifices made for us. So we pray. Bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. On behalf of all clans, families, mobs and nations, we stand before you, majestic God, in gratitude for our heritage and we pray your blessing on all beloved children in all lands. We proclaim that we are united in the covenant of Jesus for Christ, for there is but one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and parent of us all. And all God's people said, Amen. Our stewards are going to bring the bowls and receive any offering that you might have today as we sing our last song. Now, this song is one that might have new words, but you will know the tune. It's Old Lang Syne, the tune. But it, like many things, um, it has some deep and meaningful words and uh, when you've had your offering received or the offering people go past you feel free to stand up and sing verse 4 has the words in unity we'll stand as one as family will go and how apt is that for today
words of benediction. May the blessing of God's light be upon us, light without and light within. May the blessing of rain be upon us. May it be upon our spirits and wash them fair and clean. May the blessing of the earth be upon us, soft under our feet as we pass along the roads. And may the Lord bless us and bless us kindly. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you to the musicians and the tech team and the morning tea team and everybody else who's prepared for today. Please make sure you go and shake the hands of some of the new members um, and we'll see you at morning tea.